How much of your investment portfolio should be in silver and gold? Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. How much of your investment portfolio should be in silver and gold? I am going to share with you my portfolio. And as I've said before in a prior video, one size does not fit all. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. You know, early on, I learned a lesson. It's from a quote attributed to Mark Twain. It's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. What that quote continues to teach me is to be teachable. It's something my dad tried over and over to instill in me when I was young. Where I often failed was in areas I thought I was the expert in. And the answer to the title of this video, how much of your investment portfolio should be in silver and gold, is obviously up to you. When I share my approach and my strategy with my investments, I'm not saying do exactly what I'm doing, no. But rather, have you considered what others have taught me and what I am still learning along with you, okay? In this video, I am gonna pull back the curtain on my current investments, the mix and percentages of each of my asset classes, and where I hope to be in eight years during what I think will be a, a decade, the likes we have never seen. First, a little bit about myself. Many of you know that I am 54 years old. <laughs> I like to poke fun at myself by saying that I'm old Yankee. And to you millennials, I am old. But I do try hard to stay active. I, I try to keep my weight down. I try to you know stay healthy. I've been married to Mrs. Yankee for 26 years, and I have three children, two of which are still under my care. My 30-year career has been in the IT field. I started investing uh, back in 1989 after learning the power of dollar cost averaging and compound interest from a coworker. He, he, he took me under his wing. He kind of showed me his spreadsheets and told me what he was doing as far as investments are concerned. You know, I was young at the time, and the last thing I was thinking about was my retirement. I was like, really? Retirement? But the numbers he showed me were compelling. So I jumped in. And for those of you who think that I was always against being fully allocated in the stock market, on contraire, I was all in on the equities markets, both domestically and internationally. I was into mutual funds during the 90s and switched to ETFs after 2000, across all kinds of sectors. I maxed out my 401k for years. Now, it was a challenge when three kids came along, let me tell you, but it was worth the sacrifice. So. While I didn't have a Robin Hood or a Coinbase account, we Gen Xers knew a thing or two about trading hard. Hello, Stuart. So you're Abigail's special friend from the office. Oh. Yeah, whatever. Okay, Stuart, what are your plans for the future? Well, I wouldn't mind living here. No, what's your passion, Stuart? I like to trade online. You ever heard of Ameritrade? I'm a stockbroker, son. Dad, he only pays $8 a trade. Give a kid a computer and he thinks he can beat the market. I don't want to beat the market. I want to grab it, sock it in the gut a couple times, turn it upside down, hold it by the pants, shake them out to all those pockets, empty your heart, spare change. Let's see. Ameritrade, call now. <laughs> I love that video. You guys remember that one? Some of you might. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at my investment mix. And as a stacker, this may surprise you. I'm going to explain the columns here and the rows too. So the first column is my assets. Uh, the, the second column is the mix, uh, breakdown, if you will, including uh, my primary residence. Now, primary residence is not usually included when it comes to uh, investments by a lot of uh, financial advisors. So I'm going to focus on the next column, the third one, where I leave it out. So you can see the mix there. Of course, the details of how much in each of these are hidden because, you know, kind of preserve some privacy, right? But the mix is what I really want to focus on here. So the first one is the home equity. Um, some of you might know that about 10 years ago, uh, Mrs. Yankee and I paid off our mortgage. 
It was a huge milestone. We had worked at it hard, paid off more of the principal whenever we could. But we learned something. We learned that not all debt is horrible. Now, I don't like debt, uh, especially consumer debt. And we try to live a completely debt-free uh, life. We, you know, we, we, we pay cash whenever we can. We're about to buy another car and we are just saving and saving and saving because we don't want to have a car loan. And it's a challenge and we're waiting longer than I think Mrs. Yankee wants to, but we are going to do it. It's not going to be a brand new car. It's going to be used, but we really try to live a low debt existence, live beneath our means if possible. So uh, 10 years ago, we paid off the mortgage. However, about uh, five years ago, I decided that we could leverage the equity in our house to invest. It's called a, an arbitrage, and I'm going to explain it a little bit later. But suffice it to say for now, we uh, remortgaged our house. It's a 30-year fixed. And uh, instead of you know, it being a burden on us, it's actually making us money. So we'll get to that in a minute, but I, I got to get to the second, the second asset here, and that is precious metals. And I know you're probably going, what, 8% Yankee? Really? That's, just, that's how, that's the percentage you have towards gold and silver? Yes, that is. And, um, you know, again, most analysts say, between five and ten percent, if they think gold and silver is is a, a smart move, so eight percent is in that that range. My portfolio goal, however, for precious metals is to almost double that amount, fifteen percent in almost uh, eight years, and that will be mostly through the purchase of silver. The next line here is cash and cash reserves. Cash on hand for short-term emergencies. Guys, if you've watched my channel, if you've seen my Stacking the Yankee Way, uh, even my Prepping the Yankee Way playlists, you know that I advocate for being the bank. I say it all the time, be the bank, right? Get your money out of the public bank and establish a private bank. Monies that you hold on hand, cash. You're not gonna miss much in terms of interest, right? And you will potentially miss out on a great deal of risk if we ever have a bank holiday, a run of the bank, a bank, you know, bail in or whatever you want to call it. Just leave enough in there to get by um, for for day to day, month to month expenses. But keep your savings at home. So that's the cash. The cash reserves. Um, that is monies that I'm going to be reallocating primarily towards equities. I'm going to drop that hopefully uh, down to five percent. Um, you know, it'll it'll go back and forth. Obviously, seven five percent, whatever. But five percent in the next eight years. Now, before we get to private mortgage lending, that's what PML is. I want to show you a short clip from someone I really enjoy watching on YouTube. Someone I learn a lot from, and, I, and I'm and i betting a lot of you out there learn a lot from too, and that is George Gammon. He recently touted his preferred investment mix on one of his videos. And for my own portfolio, I like to set it up with a 10-80-10 split. So 10% for insurance, for me that's physical gold, 80% for investments, and I define that as things that pay me to own them, 10% for speculative assets, which don't necessarily pay me but have tremendous asymmetry, a lot of upside and very little downside. I like that. 10, 80, 10. And I like how he describes it too. Did you catch it? The first 10 he considers is insurance, if you will, with gold and silver. The investments that pay him dividends, interest, uh, you know, some income stream, that is his 80%. And the more speculative trades with equities, I think that's his last 10. I'm targeting 15, 5, 70, 10. I, I don't know. I guess you could call it what, 20, 70, 10 if you lump the you know, precious metals in with the cash. But, you know, but I think it's you know, 15, 5, 70, 10. Pretty close. And that second portion, that 70%, investments that pay him, 
That's what I'm doing with private mortgage lending, or PML for short. These are loans secured by real estate. It's a safer investment because they are collateralized loans. You can't get that in, you know, with your stocks, right? If a, a company can go bust, your stock can go to zero. There's really nothing backing it. And that scares me when I think that, you know, the stock market is in a hyper bubble supported by a very small number of highly inflated stocks, mostly the FANG stocks or the COVID, you know, uh, related stocks. I don't want them. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail. I have a whole playlist on it and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put the, you know, the link to that at the very end of the video. But in the past, I've got between 10 and 14% interest annualized or APY. And that was a great rate to get. But most recently, I decided that I wanted to lower my risk even more. And I went with someone who is a big player in my state who owns a lot of real estate, a lot of apartments. And I lend money to his company that is uh, backed, secured, if you will, by lower rent apartment complexes that I believe even in the worst of recessions, even in a depression, could potentially have low vacancies. All right. I, what I'm basically doing is I'm investing in shelter. It's not expensive properties. It's certainly not commercial real estate. <laughs> but this is my main way of getting uh, a revenue stream. I've done it for 12 years now. And I think it's one of the best kept secrets in safer investing out there. And I do it in three pools of money, primarily cash through my self-directed IRA, which used to be a 401k at a prior employer, but I moved it. And the home equity arbitrage. Okay, so that gets back to why I have a mortgage now. That third option, that home equity arbitrage is a slightly higher risk profile. What it does is it takes a house that is, you know, mortgaged at a 4% fixed rate and it takes that money and invests it at 8%. So the net income is 4%. Now again, that's not for everyone, but just because of the trust I have with the company, the, uh, the, the loans that are secured. And let me just say that loan that I use with this mortgage arbitrage is secured. All right. It has real property behind it. I've never had to even come close to foreclosing on any of my borrowers, but that is an option in a worst case scenario. All right, so let's talk about that last one there, total equities. Now, notice I didn't say equities and bonds or stocks and bonds. I said equities. I used to invest in the full spectrum of bonds in the past, but now, mm -mm, no. With the dollar where it's at and bonds yielding such low rates with what I think is very high risk, I don't want anything to do with them. I mean, if the stock market is bad, the bond market is worse. So I'm at 4% now, and my goal is 10%. So I want to really you know, increase my exposure in stocks. But what stocks, you might ask? Well, several. One is gold and silver mining stocks. Now, I've done a two-part uh, video series on, on my model portfolio in mining stocks, and that is only growing. I think there's huge potential in what I think is a low downside risk in this sector. These stocks are largely out of favor. And as a contrarian investor, that's what I'm looking for, right? Especially tied to silver and gold. It's a leveraged play. If silver and gold go up, which I thoroughly believe it is going to over the next few years, the, the, the return on investment with gold and silver mining stocks is huge. It's a great speculative play, in my opinion. And it is speculative, okay? That's why it's only 10%. Now, recently, I had to make a big, big decision. I had a private defined pension with a highly solvent ex-employer. And that could have amounted to close to a third of my uh, retirement needs. However, regardless of the company's stability and its investment savviness, I really doubted my pension would survive an economic reset. 
I know where my pension fund was allocated by my uh, former employer. Stocks and bonds. Frankly, I didn't really count on having that money when I retired. Two years ago, they offered to pay it out to me in a lump sum or in a uh, annuity. I declined. I ran the numbers. Mm -mm, not good. So I left it with them. Two months ago, another deal came in. They really wanted to pay this out. They wanted it off their books. And this time, they offered 130% of the total current pension value. 130%. <laughs> I took it this time. And it's going to be rolled over into my self-directed IRA shortly, where it's going to find its way into a mix of assets. People, I'm blessed. I know that. And I also know that I've worked hard. I've sacrificed. I learned as much as I can from people a lot smarter than a Yankee. And I tried to make wise decisions. My hope is that, God willing, I will be able to avoid the coming storm by carefully building and preserving what I've been allowed to be a steward of, financial wealth, where silver and gold have a prominent role to play. Well, the other thing I hope is I hope I have helped you in some way. Definitely check out the videos that will be appearing at the very end. Hit the like. Subscribe if you haven't. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.